Hi everyone, welcome to this presentation entitled Introduction to Wireless Power Transfer. This is the first video in this series in which we are going to see first an introduction and then we will talk about the different WPT technologies. In future videos we will see the inductive WPT on which we will talk about the operation and modeling, we will see non-resonant converters and resonant converters, and finally, the feedback and regulation of this type of systems. The first question could be, why use wireless power transfer? Do we really need wireless power transfer in our daily life? For this, I have this picture here, corresponding to my desk during a maintenance and cleaning interval. So we can see a lot of cables for the different elements, power supply for the laptop, for the telephone, the printer, and so on. So it's clear that it would be good to get rid of some of these cables. We have been using wired power transfer for around 200 years now, from generation to distribution to utilization in industries and at home. So maybe it's time now to move forward and investigate new technologies for transferring the energy. It is also interesting to know what is really happening in a transmission line because if we calculate the electric field and magnetic field in these type of systems, we will see that most of the electric field and magnetic fields are in the area surrounding the cables while the electric field and magnetic fields inside the cables are really small. So if we calculate the energy and density in this system by calculating the pointing vector, then we will see that most of the energy is traveling outside the cables. So the cables are acting as a guide for the transmission of the energy, but most of the energy travels outside the wires. So what is exactly wireless power transfer? Wireless power transfer, WPT, also known as contactless power transfer, is a technology that allows the user to transfer the energy between transmitter and receiver without any kind of connector, wires, and so on. Here in this slide, we are showing a classification of the different technologies we can have a first classification depending on the type of waves that are being used in the transmission of the energy. We can use mechanical waves or we can use electromagnetic waves. If we use mechanical waves, we have the acoustic WPT. And if we use electromagnetic fields, then we can have light WPT, electromagnetic field based WPT or radio frequency WPT, which are based on far field transmission. And then we have near field techniques based on electric fields, which is known as capacitive WPT, or we can use magnetic fields, which is known as inductive WPT. Here we can see the different elements of the WPT chain. We have an um, energy here entering in our system, coming from our source of energy. Then we use a power electronics converter here in order to transform this energy uh, and send this energy into a transducer. So the transducer is going to generate the wave that is going to transmit the energy into the medium until getting to a second transducer that is going to transform the wave into electrical energy that comes into a second power converter and finally into the load. So we can see that power electronics converters are basic elements in this kind of systems. Here we can see the advantages of avoiding contact and wires in many applications. We can have an easier activation and deactivation of the power transfer. For example, when charging our mobile phone, we don't have to connect any cable, just put 
our phone on a charging pad and then we can have our phone recharged. It is also safer in risky environments because we are not going to have sparks so we don't have explosion rigs. These kind of systems are also very robust because the, we don't have connectors so we don't have deterioration when we are connecting and disconnecting so the maintenance of these systems is lower and also they are important because they are the only option in many cases for example in medical applications aerospace applications robotics moving systems etc here we can see some photographs of these applications. For example, when we have rotational and moving systems, we cannot have uh, connections or it's not easy and robust to have uh, connections. So this solution is very interesting. Also in recharging appliances like cell phones, tablets, and other home appliances it's very convenient because we can make the life of the user easier in smart sensors also it's very interesting for the recharging of smart sensors without using any type of connection and of course in aerospace applications it is also possible to use this type of systems to transfer energy from a ground station to a satellite for example so let's review now the different technologies for WPT starting with acoustic WPT this technology employs an acoustic transducer to generate a mechanical waveform, an acoustic waveform that is going to travel in the medium and then using another transducer this energy of the wave is transformed into electrical energy and then sent into the load. So here we have some of the characteristics of acoustic and WPT technology. Usually ultrasonic waves are employed in the range 20 kHz up to 1 MHz. The transducers usually are piezoelectric transducers as shown here and they are used both as emitter and receivers. One characteristic of this technology is that it employs usually low frequency operation in the range of kilohertz so this is good for the power converter to have low switching losses. Also there is no electromagnetic radiation because the wave that is transmitted is mechanical so this is very interesting in critical systems for example in medical applications. Another advantage is that it can go through conductive materials. This is not possible when using electromagnetic waves to transmit the energy. And finally it has a very good directionality. So we can send most of the energy in the directions that we wish. Then we have light and WPT in which we use a source of light, usually an LED or a laser diode, to generate light or infrared radiation which is going to travel into the medium and then with a photodiode or a solar cell it can be transformed into electrical energy and then sent into the load. The typical wavelength range is in between 300 nanometers up to 1400 nanometers. Also it can be very directional and get long distances especially if we use laser and diodes as emitter. Another advantage is that it can be also used to transmit data simultaneously to the receiver, but the main disadvantage is the low efficiency of this type of technology because we have around 40% efficiency from the electrical energy into light, into visible or infrared radiation and then we have around 30 percent of efficiency when transforming the light into power using the solar cell so the total efficiency can be around 12 percent or even lower so this type of WPT is only used in very low power applications from milliwatts up to a few watts Next, we have radio frequency WPT in which we use antennas to generate radio frequency. 
So this electromagnetic radiation travels into the medium and then another antenna is receiving this radiation and using a power converter which send this energy to the load. So the elements that we employ are antennas as shown here. And the basic features of radio frequency WPT are shown here. The frequency range is in between 20 kilohertz to 30 gigahertz. It's especially interesting in the microwave range corresponding to the UHF band where the frequencies are from 300 megahertz to 30 gigahertz and the wavelengths from one meter to one centimeter. Other features are that it can be very directional. It can achieve high efficiency, especially with microwave transmission up to 80%. It can achieve long distance transmission, even up to several kilometers. And as disadvantages, we have that this type of energy transmission can interfere with other systems and also that it can be harmful for living beings. Capacitive WPT is another technology using wireless power transfer. As shown here, we are using capacitors to do the transference of the energy. So we have two capacitors in the in both wires. We have a power converter to get the energy from the source and send it into the system. And then we have another power converter to send the energy to the load. So some of the features of this technology are that we can provide isolation by the plates of the capacitors. So we can isolate primary and secondary. Usually we employ dielectric materials to avoid direct contact of the plates. So in order to avoid short circuit between primary and secondary, this type of WPT uses the electric field inside the plate, so it's a near field operation. The idea is that most of the electric field is going to be inside the plates. The transmission distance in this case is not very long. Usually the transmission distance is from millimeters to centimeters. And finally, it is very important to know that electric fields are harmful for the human body. Usually the electric field is going to be inside the capacitor, inside the, the, the plate, so there is, going, there is not going to be risk. But in this type of systems, it's necessary to be sure that we are going to satisfy the regulations regarding the human exposure to radio frequency electromagnetic fields. One of the important standards in this case is this one, IEEE standard C951 of 2005. And finally, we have inductive WPT. In this case, we are using coils in order to send the energy from the emitter to the receiver. Also, we need our usual power converters to do the power conversion. Here we can see a couple of coils that can be used in this kind of applications. And some of the characteristics of this technology is that at the end, the operation of an inductive WPT is similar to uh, the operation of a back transformer because we have a loosely coupling between the primary and the secondary. So we have a low coupling factor, K, that can be as low as 0.3 or 0.4 when we know that in a typical transformer the coupling factor can be 0.95 or even higher. This technology is also based on near field operation, so we are taking advantage of the electromagnetic field generated by the coil. The distance of transmission of this technology 
is not very long either, as in the case of the capacitive transmission, because at the end it's a near field operation. So the range is in between centimeters and decimeters. It can be used in low medium power levels from several watts, several hundreds of watts or even a few kilowatts. It can provide good efficiency when using resonant operation and employing compensating circuits. And also another advantage is that it's safe because magnetic fields are not harmful for the human body. So this is one of the technologies more used nowadays in wireless power transfer. Here we can see some examples of inductive WPT in phone charging, in electric vehicles charging. Also here we have a multi-coil transmitter to improve the transmission of the energy from the emitter to the receiver. And here finally we have a comparison of the different WPT technologies, acoustic, light, radio frequency, capacitive, and inductive. So we are comparing them in terms of frequency or wavelength range, power range, transmission distance and efficiency. So these are the figures that we have seen before and we can conclude that the inductive wireless power transfer has the best characteristics nowadays. We can get a high range of frequency operation. Also the range of power is up to kilowatts. The distance between millimeters and meters and the efficiency which can be as high as 90%. So nowadays inductive WPT is one of the technologies more investigated in WPT applications. Well, this concludes this presentation today. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know if you have any comment or question and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.